Records are one of the uh, interesting features of Python. Uh, they really uh, 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 make code a uh, lot uh, readable. So, uh, before I start, let me uh, ask you how many of you uh, use records before? Raise your hands. Okay, that's okay. How many of you uh, wrote a decorator before? Wrote your own decorator? That's okay. So how many of you uh, never heard of decorators before? How many of you like uh, never heard the term decorators before in Python? Raise your hands. Okay, that's very good. Okay. So, uh, so this talk, what I'm trying to do is uh, I'm trying to explain uh, the concepts of decorator and then uh, show some examples of how to write decorators so that uh, by the end of the talk uh, you'll be comfortable to write decorators. So this actually uh, I do it like a workshop, a uh, longer workshop with uh, hands-on. Uh, uh, practice problems, but um, I'm trying to do that as a talk stand. So let's look at uh, the theaters, okay? Is it, uh, can we switch off the lights? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So uh, that's how the theaters look like. Uh, see this example, uh, there's a function I can't say things, and uh, this piece of code we want uh, only login users to use. Uh, so, uh, the traditional way of writing is inside the function actually uh, get the current user and then check if, uh, if there is a login user, uh, otherwise redirect the login page, etc. But uh, the same thing can be achieved by writing a decorator where, uh, let's say if you have a login required decorator, just say add login required and that will make sure that uh, this piece of code is executed only if the user is logged in. Otherwise, it will send it back to the login page and then come, and that will come back. So, all those details will be taken care by the decorator and then uh, you can just focus on writing the serial application on it. Here's an example. So, uh, let's say you're writing a web application. Uh, uh, you wanted to say that this function should be called when user requests for slash hello. So, that's uh, a redirector that uh, takes uh, the, uh, the path as argument and then uh, registers it somewhere. And then uh, the application will call this function whenever there's a request for that. This is another uh, example of record. Uh, uh, so this is about I don't know scraping. Uh, so uh, I'm trying to download this text uh, from some web page, but uh, uh, I don't want to do that again and again. Uh, so if the same function is called once again, so it saves that on a disk uh, at the path that is specified, and then it reloads from there. Let's say you're doing a large scraping and. Uh, uh, Maybe let's say in the middle of scripting the program crashes because of some error. You don't when you restart that you don't want the whole thing to uh, start running from the beginning. So this caches the results in a file and then uh, when you run again uh, uh, for the things which are already downloaded, it just read from a disk and gives you very fast. So these are a couple of examples of decorators. Okay, but let's actually try to see like what a decorator is really. Uh, uh, so if you see the decorator syntax in Python, it's really a syntactic sugar. It's just a, a, a nice syntax for something very simple. So let's say at my decorator, it actually uh, uh, means you have a function f and you have to say f equal to my decorator of f. Okay, so that's a nice syntax for saying the same thing. But so what is my decorator here? It's like it's a my decorator is a function. And it takes a one function argument and gives a new function back. That's how a decorator looks like. So if you write a decorator, that's how we typically write a decorator. Okay. So we're not really trying to understand uh, when to use a decorator, etc. We're just trying to understand the concept of decorator and how it feels like. Okay. So what we what I want to do now is uh, show like okay. So uh, when what uh, it really uh, translates to what's it equal into uh, in simple terms. And then we'll actually uh, try some of examples of decorators. Okay, so let's say we have multiple decorators applied to the same function. It looks like this. Okay, so we have decorator one and decorator two. If we apply, they applied uh, in this order. You can reverse order. The whatever is closer to the function, it gets applied first. So say f equal to decorator one of f and f equal to decorator two of f. And let's say decorators with arguments. So we will see that there are some uh, decorators. With all the arguments with the crowd slash hello. So that's equal into, uh, so here the route is not the decorator, but route slash hello, whatever that gives you, that's the decorator. Okay. 
So it's a letter equal to router uh, proud slash hello. So that returns a decorated class, and then we have right there. <coughs> right, so that's uh, uh, that's how they can start behind the scenes. Okay. Now, before we get into writing around records, let's quickly review uh, functions in Python because we're going to use these concepts uh, 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 in writing records. So it's very important to understand these things in detail. Let's say we have uh, uh, I've taken an example x uh, number ten and to define a function squared. So how does it look like internally? It is actually when you do that, it actually creates a new variable called square. So x is a variable that has a value 10, and square, that's a variable that has a value, that's a function square. So we actually, uh, just try creating square, it actually says it's a function square, that's actually a function object. So let, just like 10 is a number object, uh, square is a function object. Okay. So why is it important is, uh, uh, we can actually uh, assign that to a different variable, like like we have x equal to 10, and you can say y equal to x. Similarly, when you define square, you can say f equal to square. So how does it look like? So that's how it looks like. So x and y uh, both actually have the same value. Similarly, square and f have the same value. So if you say f, it says function square. And you can actually call f like a function, because it's actually function square. So this is the functions of first class objects in Python. So the since uh, functions are like can be used like any other variables in uh, Python, that gives a lot of power. So, uh, what all you can do with that? You can actually pass functions and arguments to different functions. Something that you probably won't be able to do uh, in Java or C. Okay. So I have a simple function called f sum. It's taking uh, a function and then two arguments. It computes up of x plus f of y. So I can say sum of two numbers. I can say square of three comma four. It computes square of three plus square of four. And uh, say f sum length and uh, hello and Singapore. So it calls uh, length of uh, hello and length of Singapore and adds them and gives you back. Okay, that's it. Call a higher order functions, functions that operate on functions. So in fact, uh, there are many standard level functions which takes functions and arguments. For example, if you look at the simple max function, uh, say I have a list of names, if it say what max on that, it actually tries to do a dictionary order and then tells you which is the maximum. So that will give you. But let's say I want to find the largest word. I can say key equal to length. So it actually, uh, instead of comparing two words, it compares length of word one and length of word two, and then tells you which one of them is maximum. So it gives you Charlie because that is the longest word here. <coughs> Excuse me. Similarly, we can even have functions written in new functions back. Uh, uh, let's say I have a simple function here, make Adam. Uh, it's implementing inside that it's implementing a function add. Uh, it takes y and then it is x y and uh, the make header function is written a new function add that's being created there. Now I can say add five to make header five. So now when I call add five with two as argument, so the y would be two and it has a fixed x from the, uh, the scope when it was defined. So x would be five. So x plus five would be seven. Okay. That's uh, so we can even write functions that returns new functions uh, uh, back. Okay. Uh, so if you have any questions, like feel free to raise your hand and ask questions. Okay. Uh, any questions? Okay. Uh, let's look at uh, functions taking a variable number of arguments. So these are the concepts we are going to need when you want to write a decorator. So I'm going to introduce all of them right away. See so Python functions can take multiple uh, variable number of arguments. For example, max you can call it three, four, call three arguments or four arguments it doesn't matter. It takes all of them and then tells you which is the maximum. But how do you write them around? So this is an example. This is a log function. It's taking a log, that's taking a uh, label, and then followed by variable number of arguments, and then prints each one of them along with the label. And say log info. and say one two three. It says info y info two y. So, uh, what are arguments that we pass are actually uh, grouped together as a tuple and then given to the function. So, do we specify that as star args. Okay. We can even do the reverse. For example, if you have a list of arguments and you want to pass, the fun pass them to a function, uh, you can do as star args when you're calling it. So, when you're defining function as a star args, all the arguments it gets, uh, 
get collapsed and then given as a single variable, as a single tuple. But when you say star hats, when you're calling, they get expanded and then pass to the function. So I have a uh, answer is 1, 2, and say log info and star hats is equal to saying info 1, 2. And in the second case, I have arcs as debug 1, 2, and I'm saying log of star arcs. So it's equal to saying that log debug 1, 2. So this can be used for any function, not really for the functions that take star arcs. For example, the int function uh, takes a string and converts to integer. We can optionally pass uh, uh, the base. So I have a, a number ff, the hexadecimal number, and I want to convert that into a uh, number. So I'm specifying the number, uh, the string ff and the base 16, and you can say int of star arcs. So that get expanded, and then that's how we get it. Right? So that's how, uh, so these are the things that uh, 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 this is the behavior of Python functions. Okay, so we're going to use all these things when you uh, write the data. Okay, so let's look at uh, functional metadata in Python. So when you take a function, so I've imported uh, the AAC type function from time module. To look at underscore underscore name, underscore underscore that says the function name. So that's a special attribute that stores the function name. Similarly, we have a couple of them for storing. The module name and the doc string. So when you look at help or by doc, this is what uh, is used uh, to give that information. Okay. Now, so that's uh, a quick overview of uh, functions in Python. Now let's look at a couple of examples of decorators. Okay. So let's say I want to trace function calls. Uh, let's say there's a simple code like this. Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. So I have a square and sum of squares function, and I'm calling sum of squares to become four. I really want to trace out how the program is being executed. So what do you do if you have a large program? You don't understand how it's working. You just go on. How do you trace it? Go on, add prints it. That's right. So add print variable function, and then see how it's getting executed. Right. So, but uh, 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 that's pretty simple. But the bad thing is uh, you have to go and uh, change body of each function. So that's not something nice, okay. So let's see if we can solve that problem using a decorator, okay. <coughs> <coughs> so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to write a to trace to handle that. So what I really want to do is this, okay. So uh, uh, I want you to decorate each function and then uh, uh, get that output, okay. So, so trace takes the function as argument and it's defining a new function inside and then writing a function g. So G is taking star as it can take any number of arguments. So what it does is it prints a function name and arguments. And then, <coughs> excuse me, uh, uh, and then it's uh, uh, calling that original function f with all arguments that are given. So it's basically what it's doing is, it says doing a print before calling the original function, and then calling the original function and then returning, uh, and then returning that value. <coughs> I also added a return uh, print for return. Okay, so let's see how that looks like. Okay, so when I uh, 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 use a trace, the function I define and say add, I, when I decorate square and sum of squares, it actually prints sum of squares three, four, sum square, uh, etc. Like this. Okay, so it prints all the values. Now we have achieved the same thing without really modifying the body of the function, just a decorative with uh, add trace. Okay. Now, uh, is that clear? Any questions? Okay. Now let's uh, look at uh, something here. So uh, the square now. So what is add trace doing? Add trace is the same as square equal to trace of square. So square gets replaced with the function g. Now, if you look at the function metadata, uh, the square actually, when you look at the square, it says it's function g. So the metadata is lost. So if you have some uh, uh, doc or some uh, uh, a doc string that's written on a function, or uh, when you look at pydoc or something, we lose that information about the original function. So what the way to do is uh, there's a utility provided in functions module to fix that. So just say add functions or tabs, that takes care of. Uh, fixing the metadata of the new function. So what it does is, it takes g and then makes it look like f. So it says g dot underscore underscore name equal to f dot underscore underscore name and g dot underscore underscore doc equal to 
just copies all the special metadata from F to G. Which uh, it's a simple thing, but it takes care of that for you. <coughs> so uh, let's actually try uh, doing a printing print. Okay. So what we're doing here is we're just printing that in the uh, in the plane one level. Okay. So it would be nice if actually pretty print it so that you can actually see a nice color graph. So I've just extended this. Okay. So what I did is I created a global variable called level here, and then. Uh, the level is incremented when the function is called and decremented after the function is called. And uh, uh, so, function of the R string is basically concatenating all of them together so that it prints nicely. So, it's, uh, this function log, what it does is it puts an indentation and then adds a text there. So, uh, so uh, here uh, I am uh, printing the function name and arguments, here I am printing the log, uh, the return value. So, here how it looks like. Okay. So when you do that, you actually get a nice looking uh, color graph, a quarter in another. So you have sum of square 3, 4, that's called square of 3, that's written 9, and then you have square of 4, that's written 16, and then uh, uh, to, uh, after that, the function is written 25, and you actually get 25 back. Okay. So you could do this, so, uh, it would be difficult to actually do all the things inside all the modifying each function because there's so much of state to maintain, etc. Right? You have to maintain once the level, etc. But since we have put that in a decorator, a decorator can take care of all these things for you. Uh, now, sum of squares and squares is a pretty simple function, okay? But let's actually try applying the same trace to a decorator function like Fib Fibonacci number, okay? So the Fib uh, n function is computes n Fibonacci number. So if n is 0 or 1, <coughs> It returns one, otherwise it gives flip of n minus one plus flip of n minus two. Let's see how this looks like when you call flip of four. It's actually the, uh, this uh, long uh, call tree. So if you see that there's a, it's calling flip three and flip three is calling flip two and <coughs> and then flip three is called again. So there's a lot of redundant computation. But one thing is the trace is nicely pretty now because it's giving us a nice call tree. But uh, in the example of flip here. Uh, it's really very inefficient, right? So FIB is two is computed many times. If you actually try FIB five, FIB three is called multiple times. FIB two is probably called three times or four times. So how do you fix this? Okay, so let's let's look at another example called Memois. So Memois is a, a term used in functional programming world uh, to uh, cache. So what you can do is you uh, can cache the function written value so that we don't have to compute it again. So uh, so what I did is I wrote another decorator here called Memois. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, I create a cache uh, to store all the value for function written values, and then there's a uh, uh, so if the function is called for the first time, it's computed and it's stored in the cache, and then value is written from the cache always. So it checks if R is not in cache. So that means uh, the function is uh, not called before with the same with, the, with those arguments, so it calls the function and stores the result in the cache. And then from next time onwards, it gives it from cache. Okay. So now, if you apply memoise to uh, the fib function, what happens is you actually get look at the color graph now because fib two is already computed once, it won't compute again. So you just compute all of the moves. So this becomes pretty fast. In fact, this is actually used a uh, lot uh, <coughs> and uh, in general it's very really useful tool. Whenever you have a function you wanted to uh, call it only once with a given argument, you can actually use it. Okay, it's something that's very really time consuming to compute, you just say at memoirs and then that takes care of uh, remembering the value for you. Okay, now uh, there's another example I want to show you uh, 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 using decorators. Yes. How do you retry computation? For example, here's what I want to do. There's a simple function wget. It's saying URL and then uh, uh, downloads a page and gives the contents of the page. But there could be intermittent network failures. There could be intermittent uh, errors. Okay. So you wanted to guard against that. So what you want is you wanted to retry a couple of times before actually saying that uh, failing it. Okay. So maybe your net network went down for a second or uh, something. Went wrong. Okay, so <coughs> so you want to have a decorator 
that says with three tries, it actually tries it five times before actually failing. Okay. If you don't have a three tries, it just fails the first time. But if with three tries, it fails, it tries like five times and then uh, fails. Okay. So uh, if you don't have with three tries, it just raise that uh, exception directly. But uh, the director I wanted to retry five times before actually giving up. So here is how to write it. Okay. So uh, in a loop for five times, we call the original function. If there's any exception, just print the, print that uh, uh, yeah, the function fail and then try continuing. Okay. And then if it still fails for all the five times, then yes, call the original function. And then this time don't uh, cast ex let exception go out. Okay. So that would uh, give us so that would uh, give us this output. <coughs> just don't get failed, retrying, 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 retrying retry five times. And then, if it still uh, fails, the last time it trays an exception. So that's a very useful uh, tool uh, because uh, when you're writing a function, you want to say this should retry, just say at with retries. Okay. Now, uh, the only thing that's not nice about this is how many times you retry is actually hard coded in the function. For example, wget will want to retry five times, there's other function I want to retry only three times. So it's not possible. So, how do we parameterize that? So here's what we want to do. We want to say with three tries, let's say normally tries is three, or even better if you can even specify a delay. You should retry three times, but with a delay of 0.1 seconds between them. So how do you write a decorator like this? And so, so it's the same thing now, but uh, uh, now with three tries is not the decorator anymore. With three tries, it's a function that takes a couple of arguments and then returns a decorator to you, right? So, with three tries, it takes a couple of arguments and then that has a decorator inside. So, whatever code that we wrote actually back into one more level. So, there's a function called decorator there now. That takes a function f. If you look at the previous uh, slide, so with three tries, used to take f because that was a decorator, said f with three tries, but now we've changed that idea to take arguments. So, that would become with three tries. To take that becomes a regular function that takes a couple of arguments and then that returns a decorator back. So we have a decorator that's returning a function g that's using uh, number of tries and delay from the scope above. So that's how we write uh, decorators which takes arguments. But there are ways to simplify that, but uh, uh, out of scope of this talk. Uh, I mean, you can actually make it uh, uh, look not as scary as this. They have three level nested functions. But uh, there are tri tricks. tricks uh, there are some tricks to make it uh, look simpler. But I'm not going to cover them right away here. So that's how we write uh, decorator which takes arguments. Okay. Now, <coughs> uh, we really wanted to uh, take this thing further by actually writing something a bigger uh, application using decorator. So we want to build a simple thing like a web framework. Okay. So before I uh, get into that. Uh, I want to ask you, like, are there any uh, questions so far? Okay, let's uh, go. Okay, let's. So, uh, what we want to do is, I want to create a fake web, a web framework. Okay, so what it looks like is, uh, it has a or rather, I'll actually show you an application first. Okay, this is how we want to do it. Okay, so you want to say route slash hello. That means call this function with the uh, uh, web slash hello is called slash route by, so when by is called calls function. And then that's a web application that I want to write. And then and now how do you build a web framework to support that? Okay. So this is a skeleton that I've written to support that. Okay. So it has a route. <coughs> it takes a path and then that should return a decorator. So I don't know what to write there. So let's uh, let's do there. This placeholder. And then a request it takes a path and then uh, that uh, right now doesn't do anything, so it just forward for dot form. And then there's a run function that's still not implemented. Okay. So what I really want to do is when it's a run, it should start running web server. When it's a request and given a path, I should tell the response. And the route is to uh, say what function to call uh, where that path is called. Okay, so this is how we write a web application. Now since it's a not a real web, web framework, okay, so what we have what is we need to have a client Code. So instead of well, typically you open in a browser and then run. Okay, but here we don't have a, all those 
moving parts. So what to note, I wrote a simple client.file. So it imports the web app, and then from web, uh, from the, the web uh, framework fake web, it imports a request thing, and it tries calling like three URLs: slash hello, slash buy, and slash no such page. So right now it gives 404 for all the pages because our framework is not ready. So when you look at request, it just says it is 404. So it just prints not found for all of them. So the next task is to fix that. Okay, so that's version 1.0.1. So how do you do it? Okay, so when you route a uh, path, you give a decorator. So what you can do is you can have a global a global state, uh, call it enter unscore routes, that's a list. And then I'm storing uh, mapping from path to function. The top will contain path and function in that. So now, uh, once the web app is created, is loaded, you have mapping created, so slash hello maps to function hello, slash by maps to function by. And then my request is calling loops over all the uh, routes that you have. And then if there's a matching path, it returns a function, otherwise it gives 4.4. So now, when you run the client.py, it actually, the first one goes to hello, the second one goes to by, and then the other one goes to 4.4. So that you really have a almost a web framework, right? All the moving parts of web framework here. And now let's try making it real, okay? Uh, so we, we only have a, a fake thing so far, okay? You could even like make it complete by adding these lines of code. So uh, a Python web framework uses something called Wisly. So uh, that's an API where uh, you write a function that takes env and start an environment. Okay, start response. So env contains all the information about the response, uh, about the request, and start response is something that we need to call uh, to initiate the response process. So uh, the path info here contains the path that's what we're using to for routing, and then uh, says the content type is plain, and then calls call our request function that will give us a response back. Okay, and then we can hook that into a simple uh, whiskey server that comes with Python standard library, and then. Once we do that, we say Python web app at Pi, it actually starts serving a real web server at localhost 8080. And then you can uh, open browser and then look at these URLs, you'll actually get these things in your browser. So that's uh, curl is a, a command line uh, browser, it uh, uh, gets a web page and then displays it on the screen. But if you open a browser, it'll actually get uh, everything in. Okay. So that's uh, uh, all about the cover of decorators. So let me summarize once. So we have looked at uh, uh, how decorator uh, really uh, uh, is behind the scenes. We looked at uh, functions in detail, and then we looked at a couple of examples of writing decorators. Okay. So I hope uh, that made uh, writing decorators clear to you, and uh, open to questions if you have any. Any questions? So does the feel comfortable? Like, they, uh, do they look very scary even now? Or the, like, can you make sense of the now for the half of us? Yeah. Uh, can you definitely decorate this? Sorry? Can you definitely decorate this? I mean, you create a function and you make it decorate it, right? Can you decorate that function as well? Uh, sorry, so, so you want to decorate a decorator or? Yes. Can yeah. Decorate? Okay, so in fact, in fact, we're doing that. So see, uh, look at functional uh, graphs. We're already doing that. So, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty simple, right? So all you're doing is uh, f equal to the decorator of f. So uh, you can do it anywhere. <coughs> Any more questions? Yeah. Uh, we have a good reference on like, um, 
different syntaxes for doing this kind of stuff because I cannot remember like I'm behind it optional <laughs> arguments and stuff like that. Optional argument? Yeah, so like um, I can write a simple decorator, but I have trouble remembering like um, if I need like optional arguments or if I want to decorate a method, it's slightly different. Okay. Can't think of anyone. So um, I have a notes of like a longer session. Uh, I've read a notebook session. I can uh, share it with you. You can ping me after the talk. Yeah. Uh, how would it be different if you want to use that equation in the uh, ISA rather than the normal function? I mean, in a Could you please repeat? Uh, in an OP kind of context, like okay. you want to use it to take the one from the ISA uh, for a particular class, and then could it be anything different? Uh, so, not really. So, uh, uh, the only difference is uh, uh, the class, uh, the methods that you write in a class take a self as the first argument. Okay. So, when you're uh, using like memoirs or something, you don't want to put self there. That would be something uh, uh, to uh, worry there. Okay. So, let's say you're writing something like memoirs. Like the example that I've used here, okay. You typically, uh, you may not want to have a cache globally. You may want to have, have cache part of the object it itself. So, you have to do, do some more tricks to uh, handle that. Otherwise, uh, there, should, there won't be uh, any difference. In fact, uh, uh, the methods in class, the class methods are actually playing, playing, playing functions uh, in a wrapper really. So, if you have any more questions, you can catch me uh, after the. Uh, I'll be around so you can catch me anytime. Okay, thanks.